Um, remember that like my answer keys are in, available from doc sharing. I would not even begin to correct your papers because I'm not going to write this in everybody's paper. Thank you. And I'm not about to go through this all in class because we'd never get off first base. So, um, yeah. This is the factor label method. And um, this is what I'm expecting to see. And this is how I work problems in class. Some of you guys are, um, and it works real great, you're still, you're like, a, you're chunking it up, okay? That's to say, like, a, you know, you can do th like a couple of these, break it out, hit the equals, and then you take that times a couple of these, you know, break it out, hit the equals. That's fine if you do that, but you can't, how do I say this? Sometimes we students, now I don't do this too bad, but you'll have a quantity is equal to a quantity is equal to a quantity is equal to a quantity, and you never stop your equalities. And if you go back, and I think that those are not all equal. So don't have run on statements, but you can break it up. But if you break it up, I usually use a semicolon and restart it again. Okay, so that's that. Um, I would just mention the homework that I graded. Um, there were those problems. Oops, escape. And then there were these problems. Okay. Um, you know, it's all, it's all very, I like to say doable. Okay. Um, so 40, granted 40 was a little interesting. 40, you would have had to ultimately take um, the cube root of a length. So, but, you know, I think my advice is to um, try them all. I think, uh, and I don't know if, uh, you know, if, if other teachers would suggest that or what, but, you know, go ahead and start them all. You know, 52 and 53, we talked about this in lecture, that any time you're given a weight percent, by golly, to work the problem, how you need to work it, to continue on in physical science, chemistry, to work the problem, you need to break out that weight percent. What does that mean? And use it as a factor. Use it as a, as a conversion factor. It's weight percent is, is grams of a, that component per 100 grams of the mixture that component's in. Okay, so... These are all available under doc sharing. And I haven't mentioned this yet, but I can tell who's opened up, you know, whoever authors a, a web page, whoever authors an e-companion site, like I author the site for this class, I can see who's downloaded my stuff. <laughs> so it's kind of lonely out there. <laughs> but, you know, all kidding aside, your test is going to be, sometimes I take homework questions. I'm like, dude, I mean, this was not hard. Well, if it's hard, then come to my office. I can't help if nobody comes to my office. Yeah, or figure it out amongst yourselves. That factor label stuff is really hard, actually. That factor label stuff is here to stay. I know. I yeah. <laughs> and if you, if you buy into it early, the less painful it'll be. Um, so those were those. And especially if you have aspirations to stay in science. Um, you know, nurses have come back years later and said, thank you for showing me how I can, without sweating about it too much, do conversions. I feel confident in my conversions because I tracked my units, how I've worked the problem. Okay. So I mentioned that you should try all of them, and I think that's probably fair advice. Um, an advantage is, like, these weren't as hard as maybe the volume one was. But sometimes we didn't get to these, so. It is a little bit ironic that today, where I want to get to in lecture, um, your homework is just going to be cakewalk compared to some of this stuff. So. Is it really? Well, you, you can <laughs> decide. Cakewalk says it's probably different. You, you can decide. I don't think you need... 
I don't think you'll need to use your calculator for your homework, if that tells you anything. Okay. There is the number part of chemistry, and then there is the pretty part of chemistry. Some would say. Well, you know, as much as I, I like, I'm a person that likes to please. That's my personality. I don't know what you call that. But I, and I'll draw your attention to, I can't change this. I mean, this is what it, it's inorganic chemistry. It's introduction to, you know, inorganic chemistry. So, I can't change it. Okay, but. I think you're smart enough to write a new book. <laughs> oh, right. If you could change it, you'd go down in history, though. Yeah, it's like an awesome thing. Well, we talked in lab that I want to be able just to project your thoughts, you know. That's what someone needs to come up with. And when, you, when we can project our thoughts so others can see it, then we can also download stuff. But there are science fiction movies about that, and they don't come out very good, I think. No. Never <laughs> yeah. So. Yeah. What? What's that? Projecting my thoughts. Oh, projecting your thoughts. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Well, if I could project my thoughts actually throughout the semester, I want everybody to do well. <laughs> uh, I don't know if it always comes across like that. But. Okay. So, picking up where we left off. Um, all right. And Adam has... What's that? I'm the only person over here. I know. We're kind of lopsided. Come to the talk side. <laughs> So the three subatomic particles, we have two of the nucleus. Those are protons and neutrons. And then we have the electron in the cloud outside the nucleus. And relatively speaking, you know the charges. You know, neutron has no charge. Electron has negative charge, negative one, basically. Uh, proton, positive one. The weight is all tied up, relatively speaking, in the nucleus. Okay, with the protons and the neutrons and electrons are, sometimes we say massless, especially chemists can get by with that. Right. Electron has, does not bring any mass, so as to speak. Okay, so nuts and bolts. There's atomic number and mass number. An atomic number uses the, the symbol Z, which drives me nuts. It seems like atomic number should be A, but it's not. Atomic number is the symbol Z, and the atomic number of an atom is the number of protons in the nucleus. Okay, so um, if you have a periodic table and each box is, a, is an element and there's a symbol for the element and there's two numbers. One number is an integer and the other number is a bigger number than that and it's a decimal number. The integer is the atomic number, the number of protons in an atom of that type of element. Okay. So we are today going to talk a little bit about um, ions. But remember the table just a minute ago, it said that um, protons are a plus one, relatively speaking, and electrons are a negative one. So if you have protons and electrons in the same atom, if you want the atom to be neutral, you have to have equal number. That's all this says. If you're dealing with an atom that is neutral, then the number of electrons is equal to the number of protons. Okay, so mass number... Mass number is an A. I know, you're like, Duh. Atomic number is a Z, mass number is an A. Mass number is, if I say an integer, how would you describe what an integer is? It's an integer. A whole number, exactly. Mass number is an integer. Okay? And... Mass number, picture that you have looked at the nucleus of an atom and you have counted the little, what are, oh, that looks like a person. <laughs> okay, I'll say it. Anyway, so that's the nucleus, and we'll go ahead and make it, make it neutral. Here's my electrons. Okay. Um, <laughs> so, by the way, what element is this? Not hydrogen. Helium. It is helium. Why is it helium? Because there's two protons. Because there's two protons, the eyes. <laughs> okay. There's two protons. And if we look at the whole the element that has the whole number two, it's helium. Exactly. Cool. So the mass number, like this says, it's a little addition problem. Basically, you take um, 
the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. In this case, it's 2 plus 2. Okay, so the mass number for that atom is 4. It's an integer. What throws us off, and I'll say us, is we think mass, we think weight. Uh -uh. It's an integer. It's counting the, the protons, which are stuck in stone, if it's, we know what element it is, and the neutrons, because the neutrons are like, eh, they kind of come and go. Okay, well, they don't easily come and go. Um, so the atomic number, number of protons, like for ha helium, the atomic number is 2, okay? So the atomic number Z is going to be unique for an, an, an atom of that particular element. So if you have a pile of atoms and all those atoms are the same element, then they have the same atomic number, same number of protons in their nuclei. If you have an assortment of atoms that are different elements, then they must have different atomic numbers. There are some, uh, some elements we work a lot with, and you'll probably kind of start to kind of know what their atomic number is. Um, hydrogen, atomic number one. Helium, atomic number two. Uh, carbon, atomic number six. In astronomy, we're really all about iron because that stars hit kind of a brick wall when they make iron, atomic number 26, 26 protons. It's pretty important. So the mass number is the number of protons plus the number of neutrons. So the mass number A, okay, number of protons, which is fixed, plus number of neutrons, which can vary. So since the number of neutrons can vary, okay, that's why the mass number is not unique. Okay, and we're leading to something called isotopes. You can have different isotopes of the same element. They vary by the number of neutrons in them. So you have atom A and atom B, and they are the same element, but they have different mass numbers. Same number of protons in their nuclei, but different number of neutrons in their nuclei. So atoms of the same element, um, like I said, then um, will have different mass numbers. They'll have different masses. So did you see how I, maybe this is how it can get confusing. I kind of switched from mass number, which is an integer, counted number of protons and neutrons in the nucleus to masses. But do you buy this that, um, for instance, there is um, carbon. We'll pick on carbon. I think I have it coming up. There are two really common isotopic stable forms of carbon. Okay, there's a carbon-12 and a carbon-13. Okay, and uh, the one that is 13 weighs more. 13 is its mass number, it's an integer, but it also would weigh more because it's got more, an extra neutron in it. So by definition, when we talk about, um, if we have isotopes of the same element, then we must have atoms that have the same number of protons, so they have the same atomic number, but they have different mass numbers. And if you can't monkey with the number of protons, what you're monkeying with is the number of neutrons. But it's not as willy-nilly as I kind of describe it. Mother Nature knows how many neutrons she wants to have with the number of protons she has in the nucleus of an atom. This almost sounds like an oxymoron. Okay, these elements, and you'll have to memorize this, but just for your information, these elements have only one isotopic form. Isn't that like... Anyway. These elements have two isotopic forms, and these have three or more isotopic forms. So just to emphasize though, you see the word naturally occurring. Okay. So that's not to say that you can't go ahead and surgically do something with the nucleus um, with regard to 
um, subtracting or adding neutrons. Okay, heavier or lighter atom of that particular element. Um, so I was going to, let's see if I can do this.